Kentucky Geographic Alliance and the reason for this recording today is to talk to you all about geographic theory and mapping precipitation in Kentucky and this is in celebration of GIS Day sponsored by Kentucky State University. Okay so here's a graph I would like to thank all the sponsors associated with uh, this activity. So let's go ahead and get moving on. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to talk to you all about the big topic and that's precipitation analysis of a big storm that took place just the, uh, a couple of weeks ago here in Kentucky and that's a combination of winter storm Billy and Hurricane Zeta in Kentucky during the period of October 25th through 31st and it all came through uh, late that week but we want to set the uh, the stage before, during, and after this type of event. Before I get into that, what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk to you about geography. What geography is, is the study of places and the relationships between people and their environments. And it's that relationship between the people and their environment that brings about geography. So let's take that and uh, put this to a little bit of a theoretical perspective. Now geography is a spatial science. Spatial meaning space and time. Okay, so we're going to explore that in a little bit more just uh, in a minute. But space and time, when we think about space, we think about three different levels, or at least three different levels, or changing of scale. And that's the global scale, the regional scale, and the local scale. You have local weather, you have regional weather, and you have global weather. And this relates specifically to all of us in the human world, like culture, politics, economics, and the physical world, like geology, meteorology, climatology, chemistry, all these different sciences in our natural world related all together. And this is holistically what our concept is in regards to geography. So within geographic thought, geography integrates into all the other disciplines. For instance, geology, meteorology, urban planning and studies, uh, history, economics, health sciences, anthropology, demography, psychology, political science, biology, and it also integrates into all kinds of other things from art to music to language arts, poetry, all these different types of things that we express our environment and how we as a people are linked to our natural environment. But for this specific example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the idea of inquiry. So the first step is to ask a good geographic question, to acquire the data, to explore that data, to analyze it, and then act on that data. So this is the inquiry method that I'm going to use, and this is how geoscientists or geographers access this information through the scientific method. Now I'm going to concentrate on this geographic thought of all these different areas within the realm of meteorology and climatology. In other words, I'm going to be mapping extra tropical cyclones in Kentucky, the most recent one to affect us, and that was Hurricane Zeta. So before I can map this, I have to really set the stage for a little bit of content knowledge. Now, this is before Hurricane Zeta uh, came through Kentucky. In fact, it was out in the uh, uh, Gulf in the Southern Atlantic at the time. And this is October 29th, showing how tropical, uh, tropical Storm Zeta had actually pushed all the way up. And uh, at this point in time in Kentucky on October 29th, that is when we were getting most of the rain in combination of Hurricane Zeta, now trop extra tropical cyclone, and Winter Storm Billy, which was centered right here also in Kentucky with a very large trough moving through the area. So let's go ahead and set the stage. Now we're at October 25th. Tropical Storm Zeta is well to the south in the Gulf. And the very beginning of Winter Storm Billy is out here in Colorado. Into the next day, we have a trough developing. We have a stationary front starting to develop. Uh, and Hurricane uh, Tropical Storm Zeta is gaining strength in, in the Gulf of Mexico. To the next day, we see this stationary front develop. Now, this is very important to understand the stationary front because this is like a, a lid 
on a pan where Tropical Storm Zeta is now gaining strength moving uh, from our south into our area, bringing maritime tropical air mass with it, and we have continental polar air mass from Winter Storm Billy moving into our northwest. So Kentucky's like at the center of this zipper that's about ready to move through our area. By October 28th, we still have the stationary front. Winter Storm Billy is increasing in strength, and so is the hurricane. Now we can see the very beginnings of it. By October 29th, it moves right along that stationary front, and the front is now turning into a cold front, stationary front, and another cold front up here, and this is where it's at its peak, affecting Kentucky from two different areas, on the cold side and on the warm side, maritime tropical air mass, continental polar air mass. Now, although it's a winter storm per se, and it is snowing air areas, it's not snowing in Kentucky. We're just too warm because of all this southern flow of moisture moving into our area. By the next day, it moves all the way off, and this is October 30th. And by the 31st, yes, it's Halloween, and everything has cleared completely out. We have another very large system up here in Canada that about ready to drop through our area. But all I did is I set the stage so you could understand all the different fronts and what actually took place in regards to the weather in Kentucky from these two different events. Okay, now I'm going to move to the Coco Ross to demonstrate how much precipitation took place over the time. So the first day, October 25th, we can see it's primarily to the southeast of Kentucky where the precipitation is. Now we're setting the stage. On October 26th, the hurricane's far to the south. Hurricanes spin counterclockwise and it's bringing some of that moisture into Florida. And here's the beginnings of Winter Storm Billy way out here. To the next day, Winter Storm Billy is increasing in strength, moving into our area, and the hurricane Zeta is still here in the in southern Gulf, but now Hurricane Zeta is moving up, maritime tropical air mass, continental polar air mass, look at that boundary right there, and both of them are coming straight at Kentucky, and this is when it reaches its most intense. We have two separate areas of very heavy precipitation, kind of boundary with Kentucky being right at the very center. By the time it moves past, it becomes even more in the New England area where it develops into a nor'easter for uh, Halloween. So that's really cool. I wanted to point out the weather events and I wanted to point out the precipitation events at the regional scale. Now let's look at the local or the meso scale. And how we're going to do this is by looking at Kentucky Mesonet data. Now the Kentucky Mesonet is a whole bunch of different stations and they monitor data every 30 minutes we can break it out by one per day they can even turn it into five minute increments depending upon what's going on in regards to our weather so we're going to combine all this data and we're going to graph them out just a little bit so the first thing i'd like to do is i'd like you to understand that there has been a whole bunch of hurricanes that have moved through kentucky in the past all you have to do is hit this button right here and it'll take you out to an active map where you can click on each one of these hurricane tracks over a hundred years uh, worth of hurricanes that have moved and had effects on Kentucky. Very interesting uh, aside if you want to study them. I just put that together for you all for this activity. Now, what I would like to do is I would like to also show you I also have an interactive map that you can just interact with within your classroom or you can actually build it from scratch and I'm about ready to show you how to build it from scratch using all of the data from the Kentucky Mesonet. Okay, so within the Kentucky Mesonet to build this data we're going to first of all download and I have this in Excel and it's uh, put together within this presentation one file called event precipitation totals and it's a CSV file. Okay, then I also have all of the Kentucky Mesonet stations, all 70 plus stations at one hour increments going on for an entire week and you'll be able to graph all this stuff out. So how to make the map. First of all, download all the data, put it together and 
you have to register for software through ESRI. Click on this link, it'll take you out there and you can get the software, download it, put it all together and actually build it using the instructions that I'm about ready to give you. So the next step is to start these instructions, open up a new map, add data from the layer and the layers that you're going to add actually are the event precipitation totals that you can download from this instruction. You click browse, event precipitation totals and it imports it. Then once you import it what I want you to do is I want you to choose precipitation, counts and amount size and click done. Now what this does is it brings in proportional symbols that you can see that gee uh, the uh, uh, Winter Storm Billy actually gave us more precipitation than Hurricane Zeta. Okay, that's, that's one of the lessons that we get out of this. Okay, now, the next step for this, what I'd like you all to do, is I would like you to display the data. The first step to do to display the data is to change the base map. Click on base map, click light gray canvas. Step two is to tr create two copies of the ev event precipitation totals. The first step is to hover over the three dashes in event precipitation totals that you just downloaded. And then it will give you the option for more options and then click copy. Do this twice. Once you do it twice, it's going to call it event precipitation totals copy and then click those three little dots again and choose rename. Rename the first one Mesonet Station Labels and rename the second one Station Precipitation Labels. At this point in time this is what your map should look like with these three different layers in them. Okay, then the next step I'd like you to create labels for both the layers that you just created. Notice we called them labels. Okay, so how you do that is by clicking on the three buttons, opens up, manage labels, and then choose precipitation uh, and uh, make the labels precipitation. If I were you, I'd make them smaller uh, than 13 because it'll, it'll display both of them at the same time. So here's the precipitation total and this is the mesonet station label. Make them smaller and they'll all pop up at the same time. And you can pick and choose where you want them to display associated with that uh, dot that represents how much precipitation takes place. Last but not least, I'd like you all to add a layer and the layer is going to be called Kentucky Underbar State Underbar Line. Just copy this and put it in there click search for layers and it will actually add an outline layer so you can see Kentucky much clearer in regards to the precipitation. Okay, so how you do that is by clicking add then ArcGIS Online, ArcGIS Online and enter that Kentucky State line and it up it'll pop and you just add it to your map. Easy peasy rice and cheesy. Okay, so the next step and the last step we want to do is we want to make these ISO heights. This is a really cool looking map and you can do this on your own. How to make this map? Well, the first step is to choose the analysis button. Then open up analyze patterns and then open interpolate points. From that point you choose your settings. The first step is to choose event precipitation totals and then choose precipitation. Last but not least after that you want to click on optimize for study area geometric intervals. I chose eight classes. You can choose more or less depending upon your preferences. Choose point layer and then the results name. I called it Zeta Billy because it, it makes sense. And last but not least click run analysis and it will produce this map for you. And basically at that point in time you are done with creating your own individual map. Now, last but not least, uh, it's very important to understand the, the GeoInquery process and we've gone through building all of it, but now we want to do just a little bit of analysis. So here we are over in Henderson, which is in far western Kentucky, up in northwestern, and this is where we got most of the precipitation from, yes, uh, Winter Storm Billy and we can see that the humidity before it occurred was lower than the humidity dip rose and stayed high until the front passed 
and it dropped off dramatically. We can see the solar radiation during the day at night, day at night, day at night, and we can see that the temperature basically stayed the same the entire time until the, the event passed, which was right here, and then it started having more fluctuations. Last but not least, we can see the wind was basically from the north, and then from the south, and then the north, and we can see it also had this same very peculiar pattern to it. When we look at Black Mountain, wow, it's a different type of event because it's associated with the hurricane. We see, once again, solar radiation during the day at night, and then the clouds come, and we don't have near as much, uh, near, near as much solar radiation, just like in Henderson. But the humidity is much more pegged. That's the maritime tropical air mass. The temperature is basically about the same till it drops through and the event passes by. And the wind direction, you can see there's not near as much variability within the wind direction. I think that's fascinating. Okay. Now, second to me, we can see that the precipitation amounts occurred about at the same time and we got more precipitation in a much tighter area than we got in Black Mountain where uh, it was almost as much precipitation but it was broadened out over a longer period of time. And that's basically the analysis. So, and, and I'll talk to you about that more in just a minute. But we have to ask ourselves these inquiry questions. How much rain did Kentucky receive? Well, if you do all the averages to figure out what the average amount of rainfall is per square inch, and divide that over all of Kentucky, you'll really be able to figure out that there was a huge amount of rain that came into the area. How much did it weigh? How many gallons? And you can calculate that all using some good solid math skills. Here's a picture in the bottom uh, left of Hurricane Zeta as it went past New Orleans. And that was the uh, that was the eye of the hurricane and the eye wall right there. I thought that was a fascinating picture. Secondly, how can we map other recent events? Well, here is the trajectory, the actual trajectory of Hurricane Zeta, and we can see it did the, the track itself did not actually pass through Kentucky, although we got a lot of precipitation from it. There were other hurricanes that passed through Kentucky recently that gave us different types of precipitation patterns you can map these. I've given you enough data to map these types of things out. So ask the question, collect the data, visualize the data, create your presentation, and report back to everyone else why it's important. That's the geo-inquiry process, and this is developed by National Geographic, and I have a hyperlink in a Word document that will help you develop these concepts for your classroom. Now, how does this relate to your curriculum? Well, once you go through this entire activity, how does uh, a hurricane and all this moisture in Kentucky affect us in regards to chemistry, physics, biology, geoscience, math, agriculture, computer science? How does flooding and events like this relate to general poetry, music, literature, history, political science, economics, how can you integrate this entire event into all the different classes you can take in school? That's a good question for you, and you should be able to answer it by you working through this entire process. What types of careers are available using these specific skills? Well, I went out to the Bureau of uh, 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 different jobs and, and you can click on these and get more information for the Bureau of Labor Statistics and the average professional that uses GIS makes seventy thousand dollars a year the average geoscientist which I am I'm a combination of geoscientist and GIS analyst uh, makes ninety two thousand dollars a year a meteorologist climatologist makes an average of ninety five thousand dollars a year and someone that specializes in computer science or information systems makes an average of hundred and forty six thousand dollars a year understanding these things and understanding these systems and how to put it together to communicate information pays well in dividends but you have to work 
right now is a very good opportunity in school for you all to work doing these types of things. Now, I also have an uh, example. I have uh, two charts available for you for Black Mountain. You can also, I don't have these charts for everyone, uh, for all the different areas, but all you have to do is copy this chart and go to the Mesonet station that's closest to you, paste the chart in the very top, and it'll remember that it's Black Mountain. But all you have to do is come in here, click the form, go to your section right here, and change the formula to see that BMTN, that's Black Mountain, and change it to CCTY, right there, right there, and your graph will automatically change for you. I also have an entire uploaded Word document that you all can sit down and, and look through that uh, deals with this information in more detail. Really up to you. If you have any questions, please contact me. I'd be happy to uh, interact with you all anyway uh, and answer any questions that you might have. Happy GIS Day. And once again, thank you so much for Kentucky State University sponsoring this activity. You all have a good day.